unmute. Thank you, Tamika. At this time, we're going to move to the table topics portion of the meeting, and I'm going to invite our host table topics master, Steve. Hey, thank you, Glennis. I've got the, all my questions are regarding July the 4th, and I've got 23 questions. So you can give me any number. If you give me a number that's already been taken, I'll just move to the next number. So who would like to be, who would like to take the prerogative to be our first table topic speaker? I will go. Okay, great. Okay, give me a number one to 23. Um, number one. Oh. Well, I just lost your... One. Okay. I think you said one. Is that right? I did. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. How will you spend July the 4th? How will you spend July the 4th? Mr. Table Topics Master and fellow Toastmaster, I've been asked, how will I spend July the 4th? Interesting question. July the 4th falls on a Sunday. I'm probably not going to do anything different from what I normally do on a Sunday. <laughs> However, since I will have Monday off, because that's when the actual observance is, I will probably stay up late Sunday. <laughs> and not go to bed before say 11. I think I got to bed about 11. I try to get into bed a little earlier because I get up early and I'm not a morning person. So I look forward to three day weekends when I actually get an opportunity to stay up, maybe binge watch some television shows that I haven't caught up on. And it allows me to sleep in a little longer. Mondays, I don't usually run, so I don't have a reason to get up very early. <laughs> if I was going to run that morning, I would, but I'll run Sunday morning. And that way, Monday morning, I can actually sleep in a little bit longer. So the fourth will be a normal Sunday. The fifth will be a sleep-in day. And that's pretty much how I'm going to spend the holiday weekend. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Since you don't have to go to work on Monday, you can take the prerogative to sleep late. Yeah, I should have used that. I never <laughs> use <laughs> Okay, who would like to be our next table topic speaker? Everyone's going to get a chance. So, Okay, Greg. Greg, give me a number between 2 and 23. Hmm. I, um, oh, you're muted. Yeah, just unmute yourself. 11 since Brian 11 left. okay so this is going this is a quote and then i've got a question you can either you don't the way you can do you can just comment on the quote and the question is to help you have some to comment on it this is a quote from lewis brandeis those who won our independence believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty my, and the question is, is liberty the secret to happiness? And I, I'm going to read it to you again. Those who won our independence believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty. Is liberty the secret to happiness? Mr. Table Topics Master. That is a fascinating question. Is liberty the secret of happiness? The answer is a qualified no. Liberty is the secret to humanity. The freedom to do as we choose, the freedom to make choices in our lives, the freedom to screw up if we make the wrong choice. Guardrails that limit our freedom 
may protect us from making mistakes. But those guardrails, because they take away our freedom, have to be very carefully applied. Because I think freedom is an essential aspect of humanity, but it does not guarantee or even imply happiness. It only implies the freedom to make a choice that could lead to happiness or could lead to problems in our own lives. So while I think that it is necessary to have freedom to truly be happy, it is not, does not lead to happiness. Mr. Table Topics Master. Oh, that was a great job, Greg. That was some serious thinking on your feet. That was, that was really good. Okay, who would like to be our next Table Topics speaker? Well, we can just go around and pick, because everyone will get a chance. So, uh, Shehu, would you like to take a number? Sure, what about um, three? Number three, okay. How did you spend July the 4th last year? How did you spend July the 4th last year? That should not be hard, I'm thinking. <laughs> Mr. Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmaster, the question is how did I spend July the 4th last year? The fact that I'm thinking about it just means that I didn't do anything. It's not because of what is going on in our world. I think during that time, it was still locked down. And I remember they said, you can't even go fishing. You can't do anything. You can't even cut your grass. There was a time they said, you can't even go outside and do anything. So I don't, I think I was at home. I still do my work every, every day, go outside. I do work. I remember only wearing masks once going for work because it's not comfortable for me. So I did not do anything last year for July. Normally we go to the park. There's this African um, July 4th gathering every year that I normally go to, but because of the pandemic last year, it was canceled. So I just stayed at home doing nothing. Back to you. Mr. Table Topic Master. Okay, yeah, thank you, Shehu. Yeah, that would have normally been a very easy question, except for last year. It was a hard, yeah. a hard question. Okay, who would who would like to be our next Table Topic speaker? Well, how about Tamika? Would you like to go next? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, and, and were, do you want me to time for you? or? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I might get... Or am I what? forget about time? I said I might forget about yeah, time. Yeah, okay. So, so let me <laughs> let me just get set up here with the timer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tamika, give me a number between two and twenty-three. Uh, I'll choose two. Two. Okay. Why do we celebrate July the fourth? Why do we celebrate July the fourth? All right, Mr. Table Topic Masters and fellow Toastmasters, why do we celebrate, celebrate July the 4th? Sometimes I think about it, and it may be for America's independence, but sometimes I think that it's just for people to shoot up firecrackers and get together and just celebrate, or maybe just get together with family and um, maybe eat barbecue and just a reason just to get together. I don't even think some people even realize what why do we even celebrate some holidays? I just think they look at it as a, a day off from work and a day to relax and a day to, uh, like I said, just get together with friends and family and, um, you know, just celebrate. But here lately, I notice in my neighborhood, <laughs> fireworks have been going off like every night and I'm like, it's not even the 4th of July. <laughs> so I feel like when the 4th of July does roll around, you know, 
are we going to ask ourselves, why do we celebrate it? Do we even know the reason why? I think it's just a reason just to celebrate. Back to you, Tabletop Semester. You just exactly made one minute. So that, that, that was excellent. <laughs> I didn't show you the green because it just, just as you finished, it turned green. Okay. okay very good. Okay. Who would like to, well, I guess Sharon, you're the only one left. What number would you like? 12. 12, okay. Okay. Now this is, this is going to be very similar to Greg's question. It's the same quote, but it's got a different question at the end. Mm -hmm. Those who won our independence believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty. What would you say is the secret to happiness? Now I'll read that again. Those who won our independence believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty. What would you say is the secret to happiness? Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I have been asked the question, what do I think is the secret to happiness? Some people think it's liberty. Some people think courage is a secret to liberty. I do believe that having the liberty to follow your prerogatives can lead to happiness. If you made decisions that were against your prerogatives, you might feel very unhappy. So having the liberty to make your choices one way or the other, as Greg mentioned, they could be mistakes or they could be exactly what we needed, but we need to have that liberty to be able to choose our way to make our happiness. When I am at my happiest, it's when I'm feeling good, physically, mentally, spiritually. I feel loved by my family. I feel like I'm part of a community, like Toastmasters, places I can go to, or people I can go to when I need to speak to someone just about how I feel or what's going on in the world. Just that feeling of community and having the liberty to be with the people that make me feel happy. So in a way, liberty does or can lead to happiness, but my my feeling the secret is, is just feeling good about yourself and having the courage to be yourself and to be loved by my family and friends. That all makes me feel happy. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Okay, hey, very good. Very good use of the word of the day. Someone want to give me a number? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. <laughs> okay, 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 go ahead. Has Take number seven number. been taken? Number seven has not been taken. Okay. okay. So th this one's another quote. And I'll, I'm going to read it twice. Liberty is always dangerous. But it is the safest thing we have. That's a quote from Harry Emerson Fosdick. And the question is, what's dangerous about liberty? And I read it again. Liberty is always dangerous, but it is the safest thing we have. What's dangerous about liberty? Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters, what's dangerous about liberty? Well, Greg gave a, a great introduction to that because he described it as it's like uh, limits to liberty are like guardrails. And guardrails keep you safe. They keep you from falling off the road and going in a ditch and, and hurting yourself. And what's dangerous about liberty is you take away those guardrails. Now you've got the freedom to hurt yourself or hurt others. So in that way, it's dangerous. Now, what the other part of the quote that wasn't part of the question but it's part of the quote is it's the safest thing we have 
Well, because without liberty, we can be safe from a lot of things. You know, we can not uh, have the danger of, of going in the wrong way, but we have the danger of everybody going in a safe but wrong direction. As say under, let's just as an example, uh, communist China, where the people don't have liberty to have free speech or really they don't have freedom of religion, uh, but the government considers them it's safe that they have, they're able to stay in power and get their things done. So without liberty, you don't have the prerogative to follow your conscience. And without following your conscience, you can't be fulfilled as a human being, which is like what, what Greg said is being liberty gives you the power to be human. Mr. Tablebox. Okay, well that concludes our table topics for today. And I'll turn it back to our Toastmaster class. Thank you, Steve. Very interesting table topics. I know that you must have given it some pre-thought, even though it was kind of an impromptu assignment. <laughs> oh, uh, these these are from from a previous year. You know, I have them saved. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I do the same. I read you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're new club members, they mm -hmm. have... <laughs> All right, great. So at this time, we will move into our evaluation portion of the meeting. And we had one prepared speaker. So we have one evaluator that's going to evaluate Greg's speech, and that is Shehu. Shehu, welcome. Please begin your evaluation. I'll show you who you're muted. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Madam Table Topic Master, and especially Greg. Um, the purpose of this speech is for you to be introduced or to review strategy for working in a collaborative group. And you, I like the way you started this with a question. I think that is your pattern of catching us. Whenever you are starting your speech, you normally start with the question and we all pay attention. That's very, very great. You do that all the time. And I always um, admire that because you want to listening and know what next is coming. I see you are passionate about this topic and based on what you explained so far, you were able to make more leaders, which is part of um, table topic, um, Toastmaster, where leaders are made. As in, that's one of the uh, motto of um, Toastmasters. Um, people were interested at the end of the day. Um, you did a very, very great job with this speech. And they said, what did you excel at? Your organization was great, as in it was easy flow for you. You went from the beginning asking the question, then the flow, what you did, the club website, how you organize the team and everyone came together, you achieved the result without you doing much at the end of the day, that was great. Um, anything to work on? I don't really see anything that you need to work on, Greg. And anything to challenge yourself? I'm not sure if you were using notes, Oh, you were, look oh, okay, okay. So th that was that. As a few times I saw you looking at some, I thought you were using notes, but this is 
you got everything. I like you said, you were not using Node if you were not. So there's nothing to challenge yourself about. I wanted to say there's no need of nodes. You have everything going on the flow. And this was great. And again, thank you again for helping those clubs, for mentoring those people. And that was a great deal for them to be able to achieve, select, distinguish. And I hope the only thing left, I think, is for you to sign up today for Credible. So you're just going to be like the fourth club. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that um, great speech, um, thank you for sharing that with us, Greg. Thank you, Shehu. So at this time, I will call for the timer report. Okay, uh, for Greg's for Greg's speech, it was six minutes and I.